Wow, I'm nailing the parallel parking in this. That's cool. Today I'm driving the Jaguar I-Pace EV400 AWD. Which is a pretty long name for a car that basically only exists in one model. The EV400 AWD is the only Jaguar I-Pace that is on the market right now. So I'll just call it the I-Pace. The I-Pace is the first all-electric vehicle from Jaguar and since it's 2018, of course it's an SUV. When you think of Jaguar, SUV is not the first thing that comes to mind, but then again, times have changed and every manufacturer really has to sell SUVs these days. And this isn't just an SUV and an electric one, but it's also one of those, yeah, we'll make an SUV and make it look like some sort of a coupe and that means it's actually less practical than it would be if it was a regular SUV. And it's, in this case, I think it's also less pretty. Because in general, Jaguar normally makes pretty attractive cars. Uh, in this case, no, no. I don't think this is a very uh, pretty car. It has too many creases. It looks like it's been, it's been crushed. Also, it has like this wedge shape and in this color that I have here, it basically looks like a wedge of cheese. Um, it reminds me actually of some old Citroen models. And I think if this car didn't have Jaguar badges all around, it could very, very easily be a Citroen. Which, hey, you might like Citroens and then this is a great looking car. But in my opinion, this is not a pretty car. But then again, I think it's main rival and the benchmark in the segment, segment being um, EV SUVs, the Tesla Model X, is not a pretty car either. I think that car doesn't work either design-wise, proportions are all wrong. So maybe this is what you need to be successful in this segment. However, what does Jaguar bring to the table when we speak of um, electric SUVs? Jaguar, of course, being Jaguar, performance and handling. Performance wise, yeah. The car has two electric motors, 400 horsepower or 294 kilowatts of power. Um, of course, instant torque from the electric engines. So yeah, the performance is pretty good. It is zero to 104.8 seconds. Top speed, I don't know, but it doesn't really matter. As for the handling, this car, I think it handles well. It handles actually pretty well, considering it's an SUV, considering it's over two tons. I think this car is around 2.1 tons. All in all, it handles well, and I think it handles better than the Tesla Model X. However, Tesla Model X handles worse because it's heavier. And it's heavier because it is a much larger car. This car actually is just about 4.7 meters in length and meaning it's basically like a, you know, fairly compact car. It also only seats five. It seats five people though in, in relative comfort, but it doesn't have a six or seven seater option like the Tesla because the Tesla is a much, much bigger car. Therefore, it's also much heavier, about 400 kilos heavier. And of course, it will not handle that well. That said, the Tesla Model X actually handles pretty decently. And depending on the model you have, it's at least on par power-wise with this Jaguar. And some other models even have more power and they usually have more electric range. For example, if you look at the Tesla Model X 100D, it has 500 kilometers of range. Jaguar claims 470 kilometers of range in ideal condition for this car. And I think in the real world, you can subtract about 100. So you get like 370 usable kilometers of range, which is, you know, pretty decent. But then again, Model X can do better. What the Model X also does better is charging. Because Tesla gave their cars an entire charging infrastructure with their superchargers which Jaguar doesn't have. Meaning you either have to charge this car at home 
or you have to rely on a public charging station. And on the public charging station, quick charging can be a bit of an issue because the public charging station, in my experience, they don't always work as well as they should. And even if they do work, they're usually like 11 kilowatts. If you're lucky, you got 20 kilowatts. And this car, to be able to charge at a reasonable pace, it would need a 50 kilowatt charger. A 50 kilowatt charger can charge about 270 kilometers of range within an hour. And everything that's less powerful will take enormously much longer. For example, if you charge it at home at 240 volts, it will give you, according to Jaguar, about 10 kilometers of range per hour of charging. Meaning if you charge it overnight, 10 hours, you get 100 kilometers of range, which can be okay if you don't drive a lot, but if you have longer commutes, you have to charge at work or, or wherever you're going. Otherwise, the car is not practical. Yeah, the car handles pretty nicely. It's on the braking, especially if you're going, if you're going uh, down like I am doing right now. You feel that the car is kind of heavy and the brakes do not give you a sense of security you would like. Then again, the car handles well. You can feel it sort of torque vectoring. I know this car doesn't have real torque vectoring. It has some sort of electronic torque vectoring thing. But you feel that when you turn in, the car actually turns in a lot more strongly than you would expect. Then again, on hard braking, especially going downwards like I am, you just feel the car's weight. Because I don't think Jaguar put in bad brakes in this car. But, of course, it's over two tons. And if you're braking really hard, you're gonna feel it. But in general, I can say this is probably one of the better handling SUVs I've ever driven. It feels very planted. It doesn't really lean when you, when you go into a corner. It stays really flat, which is very good. On the downside, that means this is a bit less comfortable than you might want in an SUV. Meaning you drive over some bumps, over some imperfections of the road. Yeah, you feel them, you feel them. This car also has air suspension, different modes. In the most comfortable mode, it's still not that comfortable. And in the sport mode, it's, it's, it feels hard. It actually feels sporty, it feels good. But then again, if you want a comfortable SUV, this is not it. But on the upside, it handles really well. Performance, as it's electric, the torque is instantaneous. The car accelerates really, really fast, but it's also a bit unrefined because you have to really be gentle to the throttle. The moment you push it down, it yanks you forward, which, I mean, sure, it's basically neck snapping acceleration. But then again, you don't always want to tip it to around the gas pedal. You want to be able to just push it without thinking too much about it and without breaking your neck. The Jaguar I-Pace starts at 82,800 Swiss francs for the base model. The model I'm driving here is the first edition, which is a pretty much fully loaded um, launch edition of the car, meaning it has um, basically everything you want. It has a nice leather, it has all the um, driver aid system, it has the wood, which is debatable whether you like it or not, it has the leather everywhere, the leather on the dashboard, which I think is leather, and um, basically it's fully loaded but it also means this car costs 107,000 francs so there's like almost 25,000 Swiss francs in options in this car and all while being the same car with the same engine so it's all comfort features and you know options and for 25,000 francs you could actually buy a pretty nice used Jaguar XJ so would you rather have a fully loaded I-Pace or, you know, base model I-Pace, which has the same power, same performance, and a nice older Jaguar XJ. Doesn't sound too bad to me. 
A funny thing about the Jaguar I-Pace, I looked up on the configurator, the base model has some weird, I just say leatherette seats. If you want cloth seats in this car, you have to pay extra. And that's more than 7,000 francs extra to have cloth seats. Otherwise you have leather or, you know, leatherette, whatever Jaguar calls it. Insane! Of course, being a modern car, it has all the features you might want. It has screens everywhere. There's a LCD screen in the instrument pinnacle. There's a touch screen here for the infotainment. There's another touch screen for the climate control. And it's all really well made. The menu system, I think, has much improved. Even the climate control, if I compare it to other cars from the same uh, group, like Land Rover, Range Rover. This, I think so far, is the best implementation yet. I do not really miss any physical buttons because there are physical buttons for like your off-roady and driving modes and that stuff and the height. So I think it's pretty decent. What I find a bit annoying is the car makes artificial noises while you're driving. You can change the level of the noise, meaning whether you want it racy or whether you want it um, comfortable, but even when you basically turn it to the lowest setting, it still makes this fake sound, which I don't understand. This is an EV, it shouldn't make any sound. Why, why put a sound on it? It's ridiculous. So what's my take on the Jaguar I-Pace? I think it's a valiant effort for Jaguar as their first EV. My problem with it is it's actually not better than a Tesla and in many points I don't think it even matches a Tesla. Yes, it might handle slightly better. Good, great. But Tesla's already handled pretty, pretty well. So that's not that much of a USP. I would rather prefer if this car could be fast charged like a Tesla with a supercharger where you could get like 80% of your capacity within like a half an hour. But no, this car only does charge slowly and if you charge it at home, it charges really slowly. For a person like me who cannot charge at home and relies on public charging infrastructure, this is not a car I could daily drive. A Tesla on the other hand would be, making the Tesla the better choice. Then again, it's not really the car's fault that there's no infrastructure yet. Then again, Tesla built their own infrastructure, so yeah. The other thing is this car with a few options basically costs pretty much the same as a Tesla Model X would, all the while being much smaller. So even on the value front, I don't think this is, this is a better uh, proposition. You might argue that, well, it's a Jaguar, it's a better brand, but I think Jaguar nowadays is not a better brand than Tesla, so yeah. I don't know about this car, I think it's a good car, but if you really want an EV you can drive every day, you should get a Tesla. Well, it's nice, it's well made, it's a nice car, but compare it to the competition, and Tesla is a good competition, the Teslas are better. They're better value for money, they are more practical, they have more range, they have more space. Yeah, unless you just do not want a large car and you want to spend a lot of money on a kind of small car, then yes, this could be an option, but I don't think I would really recommend it. It's a first generation EV for a Jaguar, and I'm sure their next generation, maybe even the facelift version of this car, will be much improved already. So, yeah, good car, not there yet.